Have you ever had something random happen in your life that is so incredible? It gives you goosebumps. You cannot explain it, but you know this is not just a coincidence. This was meant to happen. Well, what if I told you? You could learn how to encounter more of these right time at the right place type of moments in your life. We're going to talk about the topic of synchronicity today. What synchronicity is and how to create more synchronicity in your life. And you wanna stick around for this because there is more than meets the eye in this conversation. Hey, it's your friend Mel, and welcome to the Mel Robbins Podcast. Have you ever had something random happen in your life that is so incredible? It gives you goosebumps, you cannot explain it, but you know this is not just a coincidence. This was meant to happen. Like that moment when you're thinking about somebody and then suddenly they call you or text you? Strange. Or have you ever found a $20 bill in a parking lot and you needed it because you forgot your wallet at home? Or how about this one? I love it when this happens. You sit down next to a stranger on a train or an airplane and you end up discovering some magical connection. Holy cow, they work at the company where you're about to interview for your dream job. I mean, talk about meant to be. Or you move into a brand new apartment and you look out the window and there's like a bazillion hummingbirds and you know this is the right apartment for you because your grandmother died several years ago and she always said she was going to come back as a hummingbird. And there she is as a sign. Goosebumps. Or how about a moment? I had a moment like this once where I was in a children's hospital with our son, Oakley. He was six days old and he was about to be wheeled into emergency surgery. And I looked up and there on the wall was a Winnie the Pooh mural. My husband's name is Christopher Robbins. I got goosebumps and I knew he'd be okay. Or maybe you've had a goosebump moment that was really profound and you come back to it over and over again like the time you were too sick to go to that party, which meant you weren't in that car that crashed on the way home. What I'm talking about are moments that feel like they were meant to happen. You might not be able to explain them, but you just know it was meant to be. It gives you goosebumps. It's like a little wink from the universe or God or whatever you believe in, that there is, in fact, this positive force that has your back. Well, what if I told you? You could learn how to encounter more of these right time at the right place type of moments in your life. In fact, my guest today believes that every human being, yes, you, has a superpower And that superpower is that you can learn how to create more magic, more moments that give you goosebumps. In fact, there's a word for these moments that can't be explained. Synchronicity. We're going to talk about the topic of synchronicity today. What synchronicity is and how to create more synchronicity in your life. And you want to stick around for this because there is more than meets the eye in this conversation. This is the intersection of psychology, quantum physics, and spirituality. In fact, this year's Nobel Prize for Physics was awarded to three physicists for their work in researching how particles that are light years apart still influence one another. And our expert today is going to convince you that you thinking about a friend is what influences your friend to call you out of the blue. You can learn to have your internal thoughts influence your external reality, and we're going to be bringing simple takeaways and the science to prove it to you. I am so excited to introduce you to Dr. Tom Myers, who is an expert on synchronicity. His entire PhD dissertation was on the subject of synchronicity. He's been a professor and researcher for years, and today he is going to teach you everything that you need to know. Dr. Myers is going to break this topic down step by step so that you not only understand it, but more importantly, you can start to tap into the power and magic of synchronicity in your life because he believes and knows that everybody, including you, has this superpower. And today, he's going to teach you how to tap into it. 
Dr. Myers, thank you so much for being here. Great. Nice to be here, Mel. So can we just start with the basics? I realize you got a PhD in this, but I want to start at the kindergarten level. What is synchronicity? Yeah, synchronicity is that point where you have a, a holy crap, holy shit moment, right? Like, <laughs> how the heck could this have ever happened? This is happening to me. There are, how do I meet someone on the other side of the world who just happens to be my neighbor and we're at the same place at the rate, at the same time? And probably never in, in a lifetime could I have ever made this happen again, or not me made this happen, but it's happened again. And so it is a moment where you step back like, wait a minute, what just happened? How am I here at this place at this time when this is happening in, in a way that is coming together and it's communicating a way that, wow, it's beyond me. I, it's, it's created goosebumps. It's created this feeling of, wow, there's something out there. What I find fascinating about your research and the workshops you teach around the world on synchronicity is that you believe that absolutely every human being, there are now 8 billion of us, that we have a superpower and that we can tap into those holy shit moments more in our life? Yeah. One of the things that I find fascinating about this, because this could easily be dismissed, oh, that's a holy shit moment, oh, that's woo-woo, I'm not listening to this, is that there's hard science about synchronicity. That in your research, Carl Jung started uh, looking into synchronicities way back in the day. Then physicists got involved. I find it fascinating that last year, the Nobel Prize in physics, people, was given to somebody who studied quantum entanglement, which is basically about synchronicity and how particles light years away can impact one another, that there are these connections that we can't see. You're basically teaching people around the world that you, using principles of physics and synchronicity, which has been researched for almost a century, that you can teach yourself how to get intentional about your thoughts and your hopes and your dreams. Yeah. And once you start to get intentional about your thoughts and your hopes and your dreams, you can train yourself to start to spot signs in the outside world that match your internal thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. So, yeah, and I'm not a physicist. You know, my focus is on the psychological side. I had to have the physical, the physics aspect to explain it, as Carl Jung needed to have that before he went forth with his, his theory. My focus is how do we tap into, how do we become aware of the synchronicities and these events and these things coming together in time? How do, we, how do we become aware of that and how do we take advantage of it? That helps to confirm we're on the right path. Super cool. So Tom, what are the three ways that you know you're having a holy shit, this is synchronicity moment? Yeah. Well, it's, it, things come up from out of the blue. Okay. It's as, as Jung called it, a causal, meaning it was nothing that you put into action. Okay. So an example of, hey, I'm going to, you know, call my buddy and I, or I text them and they get back to me. Like, oh my gosh, like you got back. Well, dude, you just <laughs> sent me a message. I'm counting, right? But if I am now thinking in a causally, it comes out of the blue. I am thinking about my friend. And just as I'm thinking about my friend, I look down at my phone and there's his text or he calls me or I run into him in the grocery store. It's like, whoa, that is, that, that's a holy crap moment, right? Got it. Second part of, of, of synchronicity, it is meaningful. Mm. It has an impactful meaning to you. It may not be to anyone else, but personally, this circumstance, this coming together in time is meaningful. Got it. Okay. And it's at the right time. It's like, I needed this today. This is a, the exact information that has come to me today in this moment, in this second. This is exactly what I needed. Got it. So it's a holy cow moment. If it's out of the blue, it has meaning that creates the holy shit. And then the timing is like kind of crazy. Yeah. So Dr. Myers, can you tell me the difference between a coincidence and a synchronicity? Yeah. So a, synch a coincidence can be a one-off happen chance. Yeah. Coincidence. I just ran into this person. Okay, great. But did it have a feeling of something deeper, meaningful, that almost a 
a, a spiritual feel to it. Like how in the heck could this have ever happened at this right place at the right time? So a coincidence you can explain away, but a synchronicity has something more magical that you can't put your finger yeah, on? Yeah, here's, here's an example of a coincidence okay. for me, okay? So I'm mowing my lawn, and lo and behold, a blue balloon just happens to float down and land on me. Okay. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, what's the meaning of this? What is this about? Is there something there? Is there a synchronicity moment that I'm going to be able to, you know, I thought it was weird, you know, to be way out in the country and this blue balloon happen chance just kind of float over and land on me, uh-huh. right? But I thought about it, thought about it. It's like, no, it was just a freaky coincidence. It's probably a birthday party down the road and it blew over and it landed on me. I, I, I can't read into this any more than that. That's it. It's a coincidence. Okay. Can I ask you a question though? Yes. But if you were the kind of person whose father loved blue balloons right. and that blue balloon had incredible meaning for you and maybe it was even like your dad's birthday today. If that had happened and the blue balloon came down, landed on you on your dad's birthday, he's died. It was his favorite color. He loved balloons. That could yes, be a synchronicity. Absolutely. All of a sudden, there's a sign. Okay. Because, because these events have all come together in time. The birthday, dad's death, loves blue. It means something to me. Got it. So it's more like that it elicits some sort of wonder or goosebumps or sense that this is happening for a reason. There's a message in this. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Do you have an example in your own life of another synchronicity moment? Yeah. Um, probably my very existence. And I'll explain it. It's a synchronicity moment. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to 1990, 91. And in my former life, I was a ski racing coach. So in the summertime, we would go to Europe and we would train on the glaciers ski you know setting courses and training our athletes in um in the in the glaciers of switzerland okay i'm i meet this other coach from massachusetts i'm in vermont we start riding up the t-bar and we become friends we're talking oh this is great you know let's work together on some stuff you know tell me about your you know your life and your parents and he goes well yeah my mom lives in new york and you know my dad unfortunately was killed in a a glider accident a wow. sailplane glider accident, right? Very rare. I said, wait a minute. I know this story. I will finish. So all of a sudden I said, did this happen? Was this the accident that happened in Warren, Vermont? And the poor guy was like, ah, yeah, I had never even heard that story before, how my dad died. So I kind of like, oops, kind of explain a little bit there. So like, how do you know this? Well, just happens my father and his father were best friends what yeah my dad was a ski patrol at snow ridge in turin new york and his dad roger was a ski instructor and they were best buddies right so here we are skiing in switzerland together my dad and his dad are best friends skiing together in the in the late 50s right Wow, this is like mind blowing. Oh my God, how can this happen, right? It gets better. It gets better? And Roger introduced my dad to my mom who was visiting, right? So I think, oh my God. And like, without Roger <laughs> making that introduction, I probably wouldn't be sitting here in this life form as we're today. Wow. I have a crazy story like that. So when I was a sophomore at Dartmouth, I had been in a relationship for over a year with this amazing, amazing guy. Um, his name is Howie and just absolutely loved him. I, I really regret that he met me when I was a complete disaster. So again, thank you, Howie, for all your forgiveness. I had not yet discovered like that I had trauma and I was uh, not diagnosed with anxiety yet. And so he got the worst of Mel Schneeberger, which was my maiden name. Uh, but anyway, in the um, winter of that year, his dad died very tragically. And because his father had died very tragically, there was a bunch of issues financially. And it came into question whether or not 
how and his sister were going to be able to stay in college. And I'll never forget um, that summer, we were walking across campus because sophomore year at Dartmouth, everybody stays um, on campus for sophomore summer. And somebody came running out to meet us and said, uh, how the dean wants to talk to you. And it turns out that an anonymous benefactor had come forward and was paying his tuition and housing and his sister's tuition and housing. So fast forward, um, that would have been 1988. Fast forward, it's now probably 1995. How and I broke up, uh, go on totally different directions. I meet my now husband, Christopher Robbins, and um, his best friend is visiting from town. His best friend is visiting. And so his best friend is named Ramey, and um, he's now Kendall's godfather, just incredible friend of ours. And he invites us to come out to his parents' house in Princeton, New Jersey for the weekend. And so we're sitting there at Ramey's parents' house, and I'm meeting my husband's, like one of his best friends from high school. And um, we're talking, and, oh, you went to Dartmouth? Oh, do you know how we and I'm like, do I know him? I freaking dated him for, and so all of a sudden, Ramy's mom nudges the dad and says, "I think you should tell her." It was Ramy's parents, who had been the anonymous donors because Ramy's father and Howe's father had worked together at Bristol Myers Squibb when they both lived in Evansville, Indiana. And so all the stars came and I started obviously sobbing and so did they. And, you know, that was this incredible, just divine moment in my life. Wow. Yeah. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's a story that you have. It's just, I mean, you know, again, this, as you said, the divine, that divine peace, there is, something something there there's there's a huge universe that communicates through people and through relationships and through sign symbols dreams that that is communicating to us and it mm -hmm. has this feeling of oh my gosh we're we're connected to it so coincidence absolutely not yeah yeah it's meant meant to be there you yeah know? so i'm a big believer in seeing signs professor myers in your research on synchronicity, can you give us examples of signs that people can use around synchronicity? Yeah, so th there, are, you know, things that speak to us that have an emotional pull. Okay, right? like we talked about, you know, there could be numbers. Okay, seeing eleven, eleven, or seeing the threes that yeah. can communicate to us that at that moment, in an emotional time when you need the answer, it can come to you. So examples, too, of, you know, seeing a heart when you're feeling down. Mm. Uh, you know, all of a sudden you see a heart in the sky in the, in the clouds. That changes your perspective. Oh, I'm feeling this is communicating to me. This is what I need right now. I don't know how many times I've done in my research that I got to find this article. Where is it? What is it? And all of a sudden, pop, it's there, right? Or a lyric, you have a certain emotion of being happy or you have this anger or whatever that might be at that moment on the radio or, you know, in mm. your speaker, it plays this lyric that you need to hear. Like that is changing the perspective. That's what I needed at that point. How can that happen in the world where things come together in time? It's that synchronous moment where, you know, again, synchronous, you know, the, the, the synchronous side and the chronos side of time coming together at the right place when I need it. So what about animals? Because I often hear people say, you know, my mom said she'd come to me as a butterfly. I, I see a red-tailed hawk that flies around our property up here, and I often think that it's either Chris's dad or, you know, like my grandmother. Is that also an example of it? But it's got to have the meaning attached yeah, to it? Yeah, you've got to have that meaning of, of, you know, again, is it an animal or a spirit animal, if you will, hmm. right? That that is that person embodied in that, in that animal, and they're communicating to me. Hmm. You know. What are the benefits of bringing this sort of synchronicity feeling into your life? I think it's confirming. I mean, it is like to have this 
these signs and these messages of synchronicity happening at that right place at that right time, it's confirming your value. It's confirming that you are on the right path. So how does every human being on the planet have this superpower of synchronicity awareness? What is that? Yeah. So think about it this way, is that we are all connected, that in all human beings are connected somehow, all matters in life, again, physical, human nature, is connected. Okay, so let me see if I can give you back with an example what you're talking about. Have you ever gone into, I don't know, like a store or a cafe, and the there's a person that's in a really bad mood yeah. in front of you in line, and their negative mood and the tone of voice s sends waves, like you can feel the negative energetic wave from a person like that, and when that wave of negativity hits you, the particles in your body literally shift and are impacted by that wave. Is yeah, that what you're saying? That's a, that's a good, it's a nice way to say that, yeah. Okay. So we are entangled with each other. We are connected with each other. Okay. And someone who's giving off these negative, vi it's a vibration. You're yes. giving this off. We're picking, picking that up. Okay. Among other signals. Okay. And you and physicists that study this at a like subatomic level, you are saying that it goes even deeper than that. Because I think we can all wrap our brains around the fact that other people's energy and moods and their positive or negative vibes completely can impact you. But you're actually saying something even more powerful, which is you can impact somebody halfway around the world. That there are connections between you and what you're thinking and what somebody else halfway around the world might do. Yeah. Give me an okay. example. So in a lot of my workshops I've done with synchronicity. Yes. I will begin by saying, okay, find someone you don't know. Sitting next to you, someone you do not know. And I'm going to give you, I'm timing this, three minutes. Three minutes and find a deep connection that you both share. Can I you say, give us a specific example from one yes. of your workshops? Um, I was in Nice, France doing a okay. workshop. Two very analytical engineers. Okay sitting next to each other. Of course, they sat there with their arms folded, like synchronous, yeah, what is this stuff? Okay, give you three minutes, find a connection. They both figured out and learned that they had taught at the same university, University of Montana, uh -huh. a year apart. They both s worked for the same people and they were in the same office. What? Yeah. Wow, well, I, I think if that happened to me, you'd have that, you'd immediately think to yourself, well, that's, this has happened for a reason. So are those moments where you say, this is happening for a reason, is that an example of a synchronicity awareness? Yeah. Now, why does this matter? What is the importance of anybody tapping into this sort of magical power of feeling the goosebumps and the meaning in these synchronicity moments? Yeah. It's, it's back to that superpower that we can tap into this okay. and understand that the, that the world is connected. So first, beginning with what are your thoughts and what are your dreams and what are your, your, your visions? Putting it out there, like put, you say, putting it out there in the universe, and then notice the connections that start to happen. What I'm now getting for the first time about synchronicity is that synchronicity the way I've always experienced it in my life is like this kind of magical moment, okay? Where you're right, you're thinking about a friend or somebody that you love and they all of a sudden call you out of the blue and you get goosebumps. Or I have another moment that I think about a lot where we had a very, very close friend die very tragically. And it was just absolutely horrible. He was like, he was a super close friend of ours and he was basically like our daughter's second father. She was, he was the best, he was the father of her best friend at the time. And a year to the date of his death, at the exact time that he died, I was driving from a soccer match where our daughters had been playing and he and my husband had been their soccer coaches and it had been pouring rain. And so we pull into the town, and as I come around the corner, the town that we all lived in, 
uh, the, the rain suddenly stops and the skies part and there's a church steeple right there and there is a double rainbow, the biggest, brightest double rainbow I have ever seen. And I look at the time and it was like 527 and it was the exact time of his death. And I had to pull the car over. I actually pulled the car over. I had to take a breath because it just took my breath away. And I knew it was Fred. I knew he was there. And I took my camera out. I took a photo of the moment. And that, that, that was one of those moments for me where there was this incredible meaning to that moment because, of course, I had been thinking about him all day. Yeah, Everybody had because it had been the year anniversary. You're saying that synchronicity awareness goes beyond just recognizing those moments when they happen, that you can teach yourself how to create more of them? Yeah. yeah. For That's real? It. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And and so I'm thinking about this story and, and dissecting every little piece of it because the synchronicity of symbols, signs and symbols of the mm. rainbows, the time, again, the exact time, that feeling that you had, you took the picture to remember that. So it's, it's The fact almost, that we've been coming from a soccer match with our daughters, like just incredible. Yeah. So you see the story and things start to fall together in time. It's communicating something to you that is very powerful. Now, how do you take that forward? So and, people and, and that look you know at like- how powerful that feels. Oh, beyond. Like it just makes me, when I have a, a, a synchronicity moment, it is almost like reassuring that there's magic or something larger happening than just the mundane day-to-day that we all get sucked into. Yeah. Is this related in some way to being able to trust your gut? Yeah. How so? So throughout my research, I continually got this message from people. And it is so true. You just, it just feels right. Okay. How do you start to tap into this power inside of us to take our internal life and have it now match what our external experience is. Yeah. I want to become better at the synchronicity awareness. I want this in my life. And so I'm a real like believer in the power of this. I've experienced it. And what I'm on a mission, though, is to demystify these things and the research so that even somebody that's analytical, because I find that a lot of people who get stuck, myself included, tend to get very right about how stuck they are and very analytical about their stuckness. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, Dr. Myers is going to help us tap into synchronicity. So let's go there, because I think we all buy the fact that we're energetically connected and there, there are these incredible links between us, between our thoughts and the things that we want to see come true in the world, yeah. and we have to be willing to see them. But if we've proven that point, that you have the ability to find these really meaningful connections in your life and that you have the ability to turn synchronicity into a tool so you experience more goosebumps, bump moments and so that your internal world starts to get reflected in the world that you see around you. How do you start to tap into this? Like what's step number one? So in the, the really cool thing is once you start down this path and once you start to, to see synchronicity, mm-hmm. it becomes abundant. It's, it's around you at every, every point. You Great. see it everywhere. So how do you so start? So here are the tools and here are some, some actionable items. Again, it's quieting the mind just as we did, just to, to begin to see these connections. Notice patterns. So in my research, a lot of folks talk about synchronicity comes in threes or fours or five, Mm. twos, but there's a pattern. There is an interconnecting event that links to one another. So is one tool in those moments to go, this is happening for a reason, and actually claim that something magical is starting to happen? Yeah. It sounds like a huge part of this, Dr. Myers, is being willing to label these moments as this is happening for a reason. That there's this 
courage or this confidence that you need to start to cultivate that, you know, that life is happening for you. And I like to say there are signs all around you if you're awake enough to see them. And those signs get bigger and brighter and louder if you start calling them out and thanking them. Like we recently moved here to Southern Vermont and, you know, I'm this, this podcast I've launched in partnership with Stitcher and um, SXM Media. They do all the ad sales for it. And so I was in New York and I met um, Lizzie, who's uh, one of the executives at SXM Media, and she's freaking amazing. And we're like, we literally look alike and we just hit it off immediately. She's like, so where do you live? <laughs> and I tell her and she's like, oh my God, my best friend just moved there from Palm Springs. And now he and his husband are like great friends of ours. And so for me, that's a synchronicity moment. It's not a coincidence that they moved here. I meant to know yeah. these two. Yeah. I meant to know Josh and David and so are Chris right now at this moment in my life. There's a reason. Yes, it's... but but I think the magic is in calling it out and being willing to believe that there's a reason. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm getting from this, that if you're to tap into this power, you have to be open that the power exists and you got to be brave enough to call it when it's happening because that's where the magic comes in, is in noticing the goosebumps, calling out the connection, believing that there is this force for good that is trying to guide you in the right direction and you got to wake your ass up and start to pay attention to it. And trust it. And trust, trust it. it. Yeah, that there is, and this is the spiritual connection. And again, all you, you think about, well, this is how prayers can be answered. This is how things in the spiritual world and the universe and the larger universe, the, your, the, the source or, you know, your higher self. Well, I think for, for people that don't believe hmm. in a higher power, not only do you have the physics, but I think when it comes to common sense, you've experienced moments in your life where your life is aligned with your values, your purpose, the right energy, things get into a flow state. You have experienced moments like that in your life. And you've also experienced moments in your life where there's tremendous resistance hmm. and friction and frustration and everything feels like a grind and like you're just, ha it's harder than it needs and you're just, Ugh. one of our daughters is in a job like that right now where she just, Oh, it just, it, ugh. and so you can also think about this in terms of alignment. Like when your life is out of alignment, you can feel it and you can feel that you're surrounded by the wrong person, or, or excuse me, you're, you can feel that you're surrounded by the wrong people or you're in the wrong relationship or at the wrong job. And then there are those moments where things are aligned with who you are as a person and what that tells me when somebody's in alignment in their decisions and their actions is that they are honestly like kind of tapped into this synchronicity because what they're feeling on the inside is matching the experience on the outside. And so I think whether you come at this from physics or common sense or you come at it from spirituality, there is no denying that we have all experienced these moments that you can't quite explain. These moments where you know there is something magic that is existing here. Yeah. Something crazy. You're like right. even, even on this podcast, we hired our executive producer, Andrea, and it wasn't until she came on and she had been, you know, producing massive shows for like Gail King and, and uh, Andy Cohen and had been at Sirius for a very long time, super experienced woman, that we realized, oh my God, we worked together 15 years ago. We literally, when she got her first job in radio, I had this tiny little call-in show and she worked on it. And now here we are 15 years later launching this together and she's running the whole thing. And so to me, that was a synchronicity moment because there is something that is meant to be happening, happening. And for me personally, 
when I tap into that belief, that faith, if you will, whether it's a higher power or energy or alignment or physics, that makes me more confident. It's like creating your own mile markers on the path of life. The, every single time I see one of those, I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm on the right path. So do you think synchronicity moments are there because they are lighting the path and signaling what direction you should head in? It's almost like a reward from the universe yeah. or from the future you that you're on the right path? Yeah. And if you just go through things, oh, it's just a, just a coincidence. No, 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 no. It probably is not going to bring you on that path. If you start to think, oh my gosh, these are meaningful. These synchronistic events, these people, things that are coming at the right place, again, coming together in time at the right place at the right time. It is, as you say, a guidepost for you know where intuitively where you should go. And now I know people are going to go, well, how do I do this? One of the best places to start is by adding a simple habit to your morning routine or your evening routine, which is to write down five things that you want. They can be small, they can be big, anything. So let me see if I can get the three steps yeah. to developing synchronicity as a superpower in your life. Yeah. Number one, you have to supercharge your attention yeah. about what you want. And if you don't know what you want, start writing five dreams down every damn day and if you want help with that, go to melrobbins.com slash dream big. We've got a sheet that thousands of you have already downloaded that'll walk you through how to do this. Make this a practice because this all begins with what's inside your mind, inside your heart. And so you got to get serious about putting your attention on what you want instead of bitching about the things that you don't have or the way that things are. So superpowering your attention is step number one for developing synchronicity in your life, correct? Yep, yep. Okay, great. So step number two, Professor Myers, if I'm getting this, is opening up your heart to those moments where now that you have supercharged your attention and said, I want that damn Gucci handbag. I don't care that it's sold out. I don't care that this, or I want friends. Yeah. I yeah. need more friends in my life. I'm lonely. So you supercharge your attention to what you want. And then you got to be open to the, in the beginning, coincidences that you could easily be like, eh, that's the way that my phone listens to me and it's serving up ads or, oh, that person's just reaching out because they want something. You got to get rid of your negative filter on what's happening around you and you got to wake the hell up and realize that all around you, Dr. Myers is here to profess people. He has researched this. All around you are magical connections and it's connected to what you want inside you. Yeah. And the second and that the, you... And the emotion that comes with that. You, you, you feel. Yes. You feel it. Yes. Yeah. And so you got to start to get positive and intentional about calling out these signs that life is trying to help you, that things are going in the right direction. You got to grab one little thing and use it as like a little toehold to hold on to. And then when you call out that sign, you got to walk toward it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You know, I never realized that this is how I live my life. Like, I think what I've learned in this conversation is that synchronicity is something that I've been tapping into for a very long time. And there are periods in my life where I wasn't tapping into it and I was completely out of alignment and it was full of friction and self-destruction. And then there have been periods where I've allowed myself to say what I want or at least say what wasn't working and I allowed myself to start to believe in the signs that would be presented. And having done a tremendous amount of research about the reticular activity system and the filter in our brains and how you can change your mind and how your mind can help you, I really hope that as you're listening to this conversation, yes, you, I'm talking to you, that you will open your heart and your mind to this because it's very real. I mean, they wouldn't be giving the Nobel Prize to somebody doing quantum entanglement if two particles a light year away could not like impact one another. And I want you to realize the power of your thoughts 
and you to realize that the world is trying to help you, that you are meant to live in alignment, that synchronicity is not only possible, it's something that you're wired to do. And you can start today. And I also realized something else, Dr. Myers, and it's this. You know, I wrote about this thing that I've done for years that I didn't realize is an example of training yourself for synchronicity. And the assignment's very simple. Today, when you're done listening to this podcast, I want you to look around you and I want you to find the symbol of a heart. And I want you to find it in nature, just naturally occurring somewhere. It could be the shape of a cloud. It could be on the top of your coffee. Last night, I noticed somebody tagged me online and she was riding Peloton. And as she's riding Peloton, she looked up and in front of her, beyond the screen, was a bookcase. And up on the bookcase was a um, vase. And somehow coming through the window, the sunlight had made the perfect shape of a heart on that vase. And she called it out. And so when you look around today, whether it's a leaf or a spot, my dog has, I realized after we got our puppy, he has a spot on his nose that is a heart. And I'm like, if that's not synchronicity, like that, like this is the dog that's meant for me. And when you see the heart, I want you to just for a second, open your mind and your heart to this kind of cheesy notion that will change your life. And tell yourself that that heart was placed there for you to find. Because when you allow yourself to kind of experience life as a gigantic scavenger hunt, that every day there are clues all around you. Clues that tell you you're on the right path or the wrong path. Clues that are there to help you feel more confident and full of faith that you're heading in the right direction, that things are going to get better, that you're meant for more. When you can turn your life into a giant scavenger hunt, it is the most incredible thing in the world. And looking for hearts or seeing angel numbers or any other sign that might make you feel a little empowered, this isn't some cheesy thing to do. Not only is there neuroscience around how you're reprogramming the filter in your brain when you intentionally fire up your awareness and you look for signs, but I think something really, really important is happening too. Seeing signs, looking for meaning and synchronicities, it provides guardrails. And these guardrails, they keep you going. They make you feel less alone. And right now, you may feel really alone, but I want you to know you're not. You can use this heart exercise as a way to start to see synchronicity. We're dealing with an epidemic of loneliness, and it's impacting everybody. So whether you're flying high right now and you need to look for signs and synchronicities in order to land the biggest deal of your life, or you need to look for signs and synchronicities just to make it through another day, this can help. The truth is, synchronicity, signs, it can help you believe again. In fact, as we were just wrapping up the recording of this episode, an email came in, I kid you not, at 4.14. And I just happened to glance at it as we were literally about to go, okay, episode's done on synchronicities. And I said, everybody, wait a minute, wait a minute. Eliza, who's a listener to this podcast, wrote in to the website for the form for the podcast. And here's what it said. I don't want anything, Mel. I just want you to know that I was literally on the verge of ending my life. And then I met you, my new friend. You're the one human on the planet right now who was able to keep me on this earth. And you don't even know me. Thank you. Also, I finally found one heart. I've been looking for days. It's a piece of coral. And I love you for telling me to look for hearts. Again, I don't want anything. Just to say thank you for saving my life. This email to me was synchronicity. 
It came in at exactly the right time. It has extraordinary meaning for me because something felt missing from the episode. And what was missing was this synchronicity, something profound to show you that these simple things that I'm telling you work actually do. That sometimes all you need is to see a piece of coral in the shape of a heart and tell yourself that it was put there for you to remind you that yes, you are loved. And yes, you have a life that is worth living. And yes, you have the strength and the courage to get through whatever it is that you're facing. And that the synchronicities and the signs are all around you, that you have a big and beautiful life that is waiting for you. Whew. So, Eliza, thank you. And keep looking for hearts because now that you have found one piece of coral, that reticular activating system in your brain, that filter that helps you spot synchronicities, guess what? You just programmed it today. And now it's going to help you see even more. Thank you for taking the time to write in. And God, I just love this because what it shows is that when you tap into the science of synchronicity, you're not only training your brain for miracles, you're actually bringing a tool into your life that is an act of self-love, self-support, self-confidence, self-resilience. Talk about a superpower. <laughs> Amazing. And I can't wait to hear all the other stories of synchronicity that come rolling through. So please go to melrobbins.com and on the topic form, share your stories about synchronicity. Tell us about the hearts that you're seeing or better yet, post a photo of yourself with one and tag us so we can repost you and cheer you forward. And one more thing, I want to say thank you to Dr. Myers. Thank you for being with us. And to you, I want to say, get out there and go find some rocks. Get out there and be looking for some hearts. I got goosebumps. Oh my gosh. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.